All right, hello, welcome. My name is Shayna. I'm an astrologer, tarot reader, incessant talker, amongst some other things. And this video is about Venus square Saturn in a natal chart. So I am deeply, deeply inspired by Jewel Mayberry's um, Sinistry Aspect series that she has on her channel. I love that <laughs> series. But she does them for Sinistry and Composite charts. And I wanted to do my own kind of aspect series. And if you watched the last video, I did say that I wasn't going to do any series, but this is going to be like an ongoing forever thing. I'm not in any rush to finish it. I'm not in any rush to do anything. I'll just kind of make these videos as I want to. So if you have an aspect in your natal chart that you would love a video about, leave it in the comments. And Venus square Saturn is just the one that I feel like I have to start out with um, because I want to, um, but I have it. It's an aspect that follows me everywhere that I feel like there's no better person to talk about than me. So... There you go. And just to get it out of the way, I have an astrology TikTok that'll be linked down below. I have an Instagram and I also sell birth chart readings. Um, anyways, let's move forward. <laughs> just to go over the basics of Venus square Saturn, let's first talk about Venus. Venus is a personal planet. It is ruled by Taurus and Libra. It is our basic like aesthetic sensibilities, how we look, how we dress, you know, love, relationships, what we value in life our feminine nature. Also, you know, it's the Empress card in the tarot. It's how we want to be pleased. It's how we are given the finer luxuries in life. Or if we're not given the finer luxuries in life, um, which is kind of conducive to this aspect. I am totally wearing an outfit that has nothing to do with Venus square Saturn. Um, yellow is my favorite color ever. Um, <laughs> it's very solar plexus chakra. I really like that. Mm. And then Saturn. So Saturn could not be really farther from Venus. I guess like Mars would be, but everything that's an opposite kind of shares something in common. So I really think these two planets could not be more different. Saturn is the ship planet. That's the term I've coined for it, okay? It's rules, regulations, restrictions. It rules time, you know, father time. You know, I have a picture of Saturn eating his own child. Um... <laughs> Saturn is just like that authority figure. It's that father in our life. I mean, it doesn't have to be the dad, um, but a lot of times it will show up like that. Um, it's that dad in our life saying, you can't do this. You have to do that. I expect this from you. I expect that from you. I, you know, I thought better of you or I expected more. Um, it's that nagging thing in the back of our head that tells us, you know, we can do better to keep pushing. It rules like limitations. Um, it can rule sometimes fears. It, it rules overcoming obstacles. Saturn rules Capricorn and it also co-rules Aquarius. Now let's go into a square. A square is an aspect formed by um, a 90 degree orb and it basically it causes friction. It causes tension. These two things do not get along but not even in the sense that they're opposite. If opposition's going this way, the square is going that way. It's going two extraordinarily different directions. It's going right and backwards or it's going left and forwards for example. So these things do not get along. It takes a lot to grow into your squares. As you're older, you know, a lot of times there is mastery between the two planets, but when you're young, it, it's just annoying <laughs> and it's just hard and it's just frustrating because it's that thing that like everybody can figure out, everybody can click it together, but you just can't. Okay, so this is not um, me teaching you what aspects are, but just for the little preface. So let's now go into Venus square Saturn. Now, this might also apply to Venus opposite Saturn. Um, a lot of things do, but not everything does. So if you have Venus opposite Saturn, you probably will resonate with like 75% of this video, but I'm probably going to make another video about Venus opposite Saturn later on. I kind of want to separate the squares and oppositions, but I'll combine the sextiles and trines. That doesn't matter. So let's keep going. Venus square Saturn is an aspect aspect that it, it's so close to my heart, literally. It's Venus. <laughs> um, I have it. It plays very prominently in my life, very literally in my life. Um, my mom has it. My dad has it. My aunt has it. My grandparents have it. Um, I know friends that have it. Like, this aspect runs deep through my bloodline, man. <laughs> this is like a major core theme. Venus square Saturn, if you want to sum it up in a nutshell, relationships do not come easy and your best relationships will probably come later in life. 
Now that's a really nice way to put it, so let's put it my way. Oh, it sucks. Oh my god. You think you're ugly for forever. Like, <laughs> even if you're not ugly, you go through like a major ugly phase all the time. And you like don't know how to dress yourself for a really long time. Like, I always, always, always will look back at my old outfits and cringe. But I feel like, luckily I'm a Venus and Sagittarius, so I'm like, it's all part of the process. And I'm okay with it. And I laugh it off and keep moving on. This video is going to be pretty personal, which is why I wanted to start out with it. So I'm sorry if you don't care about me. I'm a Lilith and Leo. It comes out sometimes. So with Venus square Saturn, there's just like a real ugly duckling feeling from when you're a young age. You know what? Maybe this yellow sweater does work after all. Um, <laughs> I, this is a side note, but I was looking through pictures of my mom throughout her life. My mom passed in 2020. Very Venus square Saturn thing. That is actually very Venus square Saturn. I love my mom more than anybody I've ever met in the entire world. And she just, she is deceased. That's like square Saturn. It's been rough. You know, I, I never refer to people as angels, but the world lost an angel with Jane. <laughs> they really did. My mom also has Venus square Saturn. That's why I'm talking about her. And we both were really geeky middle schoolers, like way, way geeky. Like also there's probably a tendency to be skinny and scrawny, I think, because Saturn is like restriction limitation. So when you're young, there's probably like a skinny, awkward, scrawny phase, which I definitely went through for way, way too long. I think physically you just might look a little bit pre pubescent for a little bit longer than most people. Um, <laughs> and then when she was in her early 20s, I was looking at photos of her and she honestly looked older in her early 20s than she did in her 30s. In her 30s was when she I was when she peaked she said that to me and I'd have to agree um in her 30s she peaked she looked really young she looked like at the height of her beauty she was at her most comfortable weight she always said she was the most happy with herself the most happy with herself career wise which Saturn does have a lot to do with career because it has a lot to do with those external things how the external world views you and Venus is what you love you know if you love doing your job Venus square Saturn probably has a lot of jobs that they don't love doing that doesn't really align with their Venus align with the things that they're good at um, but when she was 30, which if you don't know, your Saturn return is when you're about 30. Um, so usually when you're about 30 is when those Saturn things that you've had trouble with your whole life, you kind of have breakthroughs with. I'm definitely feeling like I'm looking better as I get later into my 20s. And I'm only going to get better from here, guys. So watch out. <laughs> Which is a Venus square Saturn, that's what you should tell yourself. You should not fear aging as a Venus square Saturn, although many of us probably do. I really don't, but if you fear aging as a Venus square Saturn, don't. You'll probably look really, really good when you're in your 30s, even to your 40s. Um, and if you take care of yourself like a lot of Venus square Saturns do, then you'll be okay. Moving on. So another big, big, huge highlight of this aspect, like a big fundamental part of this aspect. It's not just as shallow as what you look like. Um, it goes a lot deeper than that. And it's that love is conditional. That is what you're taught from a young age, and that is how you're taught to give love. You do not really know what unconditional love looks like, and if you do try to do the unconditional love thing, you'll probably fumble and give it to the wrong person. I know I always felt like love could be taken away from me at any time. If I just made the slightest misstep, if I tripped in just the slightest bit, then the, my parents' love would be taken away from me. Um, this was especially relevant to my dad um, as Saturn rules the father, and it has shown true in my recent time if it's not like an extreme like we were talking and now we aren't at all um it could just be that you live at your dad's and he's always kicking you out and he's always threatening to kick you out he's always yelling you know this is my house this is my stuff i'm gonna kick you out uh i'm gonna kick you out of this car if i don't like you i'm gonna kick you out of this if i don't like you it can just be like little daily reminders that if you don't do everything for your parent or your partner um they will cut the love off. And you probably will get into relationships with people that are colder, that are icier, that will cut you off sooner um, because that's what you're conditioned to know and that's um, the people that you're going to go for probably later because, you know, we all repeat those same cycles in our life um, from when we were a kid. The shout out to a quick book, Relationships and How to Survive Them by Liz Green, has a lot to do with this stuff. Um, it's a book on Kindle I read. It's, it's fantastic. I would 
recommend this to anybody with a Venus square Saturn. It talks about a lot about all the different kinds of love triangles. Another big theme with Venus square Saturn is um, not finding love until you're older, as I mentioned. But um, for example, you know, I did not enter an official relationship. I was never anybody's girlfriend until the age of 25. And I was like, totally 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 not even giving a shit about romance or relationships or anything like that until i was like 18 and out of high school i really didn't give a fuck you know it's like a, another like common thing is like i've never been, had a love letter written about me like i've been asked out on very few dates i'm usually the one that pays I'm usually the one that asks the person out. Also, if you were in a relationship from a younger age and you do have Venus square Saturn, there was probably a lot of feelings of wrong place, wrong time. But I am trying to learn that, you know, divine timing is a thing, the cosmic forces have my back, all that sort of stuff. And the timing that you're given is for a reason. Um, but it does always feel like, oh, why didn't this person just come a little bit sooner? Or, ugh, why didn't this person just come a month later? Or, ugh, why does this person live here? Ugh, just as I met this person, I'm being shipped off to the army. Oh my god, I had, you know, a free room for six months and somebody could have stayed there. And just when I meet this person, I have to move. Things like that, you know, oh, I'm in this kind of yucky ending of a relationship and I meet the person of my dreams and now it's all messy. I don't want to start like this. I want to have a clean start to my new found soulmate. But no, not with Venus square Saturn. There's always going to be some mess. There's always going to be some coagulation there. Because they were taught that love is conditional, they were not really cuddled. They were not really coddled growing up. This is not an aspect you were, you were told every day that you're great at what you do. And I mean, I was told that I was beautiful, but I was definitely not told that I was like very good at what I did. I was never the favorite. My talents were never really correctly nurtured. I was constantly doing things that didn't fit to my strong suits and the things that were my strong suits were very much ignored. This can also be something where it's like you don't have time for yourself you didn't give time to nurture your talents maybe your parents also this could be a big financial thing as well maybe your parents weren't able to financially afford the after school activities that you would have been good at like let's say you would have been a great guitarist but your parents couldn't afford any guitar lessons so you had to teach yourself let's say you would have been really good at writing but you weren't allowed to get any books at the Scholastic Book Fair. Or I don't know. I'm just trying to think of some examples. Things like that are very common. Also, a side note is I've noticed with Venus Square Saturn is they often wear clothes that are either too big or too small for them. Their clothes rarely ever fit right. I don't know what I, why that's a thing, but clothes just do not fit us right. Clothes will never fit us right. They're always shrinking wrong. They're always hugging our body a little bit off. Maybe we have a little bit more of a stomach or, or something like that. Or even if we have a conventional body maybe you feel skinny so you wear really big clothes or whatever it is maybe you're really tall so clothes are really short on you or really short so clothes look really long on you and looks goofy um something like that and there's just always some way where clothes ain't fitting right, ain't doing the right thing. Or what can also be true is like you're really beautiful, but you don't really know how to dress to conventional beauty, or you don't really know how to dress to suit your type. And it can take a really long time to figure out how to dress for yourself and how to dress for your body type. And um, there can be a lot of like mistakes along the way, but I, as a Venus and Sagittarius, I think that's just more fun. <laughs> that yellow sweater, you know. <laughs> These are not people who were really fond over a lot, um, at least externally. They were not made to feel that way. If they were fond over, then they probably weren't really told it much. And they pro really, probably weren't really made to feel that way. Or there's just always going to be the deep-seated insecurity. Um, and self-love is a big theme with this aspect because there's a lot of feelings of the hermit vibe or aloneness with this Venus square Saturn. A lot of feelings of being so alone in the world, um, not having anybody, not maybe not even having much of a family could be a common thing with this Venus square Saturn since Saturn does rule like generational things, generational old age, all those kind of things. So maybe once you're older, your family kind of disappears or you never felt like a really strong connection to your family. Maybe you linked on to one family member or something along those lines. Even if you had a big family, you might even just still feel even more alone within that big family because you don't relate to them. I remember 
were, it was really hard for me to learn affection. Um, like a good example of Venus square Saturn, both my parents have it. They slept in separate rooms my whole life. And I thought that was very normal. And it took me a really long time to integrate sleeping next to somebody. That was like really, really weird for me. Like cuddling somebody at night like that was extraordinarily foreign to me and I had like a few freak outs where I would like wake up in the middle of the night and just like shove the person off the bed and scream at them to go sleep in their own bed because I just was so not used to it if you have Venus square Saturn you might have some feelings like that where it's like you had to kind of learn how to be affectionate you had to learn how to like integrate soft warm feelings into your relationship because you can just so easily detach and cut yourself off from that person and you're so used to the coldness um that that's like what you get comfortable with um yeah you probably have to be taught to kind of be intertwined with somebody there can be some codependency with this aspect though because it's like when you do find that person or find a person that you really latch on to you can really latch on to them really hard because you feel like there's nobody else that will tolerate you there's nobody else that will resonate with who you are there's nobody else that will love you and find you beautiful so you can really cling on to somebody but probably that first person or the first few people that you cling on to you've had to go through separations with them because there is a square and you've had to learn how to be alone more like repetitively throughout your life like not just once did you have to learn how to be alone you constantly have to learn how to be alone you might even be in relationships where it feels like you're more single than you are even in a relationship you might not know how to really fawn over somebody you might not really know how to like compliment somebody like that and you also might go for people that don't really know how to compliment you and fawn over you like that even if they feel that way there's usually just like a lack of that external sharing for whatever reason it may be so with this aspect self-love is absolutely vital i'm literally wearing like a heart necklace that says me <laughs> For my venus square saturn another thing with venus square saturn that is pretty honestly good is these people are usually very 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 talented they usually don't feel very talented because their expectations are so high because their parents expectations are so high that they don't really feel very talented but they usually are so good at what they do they have such a high bar for themselves and everybody else at their talents because venus does represent like the things that you love to do and saturn represents the things that you spend a lot of time working towards your goals um so they set really really high goals for themselves because they know they have that long-term resiliency to keep working at it and also because they know that they know rejection venus square saturn knows and understands rejection and because of that they will keep working at things a lot harder and a lot longer than most people so because there is a greater resiliency because these people know rejection a lot more you know a little obstacle will not stop them however it does feel like most of the obstacles that they encounter in trying to get to their goals are a lot more than just little hiccups they can feel like huge gigantic ridiculously big brick walls they constantly have to go through they constantly have to get through before they can start anything before they can do anything and even during that process it can still like be like they constantly run into all this other stuff but in the end uh saturn always goes saturn will be like well yeah but you're better for it right i'll use like a really good example i know somebody with Venus square saturn that built a bike that built like a motorcycle a denver's chopper if you know what i'm talking about and he was telling me about how every step of the way it was like oh, constant thing that he was getting into and and you know he would try and ask for help right and the person would fall through so he basically had to learn how to do everything himself but at the end he came out better for it because now he knows so 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 much more about it because of it and he can look at it and feel a lot more accomplished because he worked on it so much more himself instead of having other people do it for him now you will probably get help along the way with venus square saturn somebody will help you and they will teach you but you know when you get help with venus square saturn they're not going to baby you through it they're going to just kind of throw you into the deep end and well you better fucking not drown and if you do i'm not going to come in and save you so you know it's kind of that mentality <laughs> But like I said, any project that you go into, you come out way better for, way smarter for, way, way more well-rounded for than most people. If you're looking for somebody to get a service from, you know, I would go for the Venus Square Saturn. They're going to hold themselves to a very high regard and they're going to have a lot of integrity in their work. And they're really going to know how to fight and push through things and take their time on it. Venus Square Saturn is definitely the kind of person that's like, oh, I spent a whole day on this and it's not good. Well, I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to throw it out. Things always, always, always take way, 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 way more time than you hope and want them to. 
always. Like these are really people that are not going to get much admiration until their 30s but when they do get their admiration they are going to be so well respected because like i said they worked harder and and smarter than almost anybody else to get what they get and they deserve it more than anyone else but even then you're still gonna feel like you're never gonna get the proper amount of praise or whatever, but that's just that Venus part of you that always wants more. You know, the Venus is the Empress. We always want the adoration. We always want so, so, so much more than we receive. And uh, we always also think that we deserve more as Venus, square Saturn, and just as people. Um, so there always will be a little bitterness. There's gonna straight up, I should just call it, there's straight up bitterness with this aspect. You know, I'm so beautiful. Why am I not in this perfect relationship? I'm so talented. Why am I not getting this? I'm so healthy. Why don't I look like this? You don't realize how obsessive you are. I believe strongly that every physical ailment is strongly connected to um mental stuff and emotional stuff if you're constantly saying that to yourself which venus square saturn will obsess about it will constantly say that to yourself that's going to become your reality so you really really have to force yourself to say say things to yourself that you might not believe there's a lot of self-consciousness and you just have to change your thought patterns you have to as a venus square saturn even if you don't believe it like the only thing that got me through this like i had really bad digestive issues because my venus is in my sixth house i should mention and that will add to it to my health stuff being relevant uh, look to the house and that'll say a lot of where you um repeat those bad mantras like if your venus is in the second house i'm poor i'm poor i'm poor well you're gonna be poor oh i'm unhealthy i'm unhealthy i'm healthy well you're gonna be unhealthy with sixth house oh i'm un not talented i'm not talented i'm not talented because you have venus square saturn in the fifth house well that's going to become your reality so you really have to change those mantras up and the only thing that helped heal me from my digestive issues was like me sitting down and being like i don't care how awful my stomach looks right now i'm just gonna tell myself that it looks good i'm just gonna tell myself that i have a healthy stomach and it wasn't as just superficial as that i literally like wasn't able to digest food at that time it was like really painful it was like a whole other thing but like that changing my mindset changed it so these people do not trust easy these people are very slow to commit um also like i said with high standards they also in a good way part of the reason why i was never involved with somebody like throughout high school or throughout my like schooling years was because i thought everyone was ugly was because <laughs> was because i thought nobody was worthy of me if i'm being honest um that's probably my lilith and leo a little bit kicking in and so that can also be a common thing is like you'll probably hold out for a good relationship which is good and there is is a level of love that you will command and demand from somebody else and you will leave if you feel like you're not getting that you will cut that person off if you feel like you're not getting that um this is definitely an aspect where you probably will have to cut a lot of people off cut the people that you love most off which is very very painful and very hard but like i said there is a good level of standards these people are rarely going to be in a relationship just to be in a relationship and if they are in that relationship for somebody else they're probably not going to be giving it their all and fully committed it, it, you know maybe if you have like a lot of air energy just for the sociable aspect you might get involved with somebody that you're not fully committed in but you're not going to give them your full commitment because you know how much you can pour your soul and your heart into somebody else that you will be very restrictive of that for a very long time but also i think the biggest thing that's really scary about this aspect is just how quickly you can cut yourself off from somebody you love and just because you get conditioned to do that you get conditioned to just like cut yourself off and become icy and be like yep the only person i can rely on is myself the only person i love is myself and that will remain true always and you can cut yourself off from a lot of really fun young experiences because of that a fear of rejection can be huge like i was so scared to tell people if i liked them because that just felt so vulnerable because i was just so mortified of rejection that it held me back from so much stuff that i remember there was one day where i almost had this like teenage romance experience and i could have but because i have a venus square saturn i thought he ate his soup funny and i was like he eats his soup weird and i cut him off i shit you not if a venus square saturn picks you and if a venus square saturn commits to you and says i'm going to be in a monogamous relationship with you if a venus square saturn um lets you intrude upon their life if a venus square saturn gives you their time gives you their quality time they really 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 love you if they you know try to keep up with you and make an effort to talk to you in any way like even if that's just calling you once a month like and you're a friend that's a big deal the fact that they have your phone number and they call you and they tell you things 
they really really like you but you should also know that they're probably ready to run at any time or they're probably ready to cut it off at any time and that's something that needs to be worked through this is definitely an aspect that needs to be recognized if somebody has it this is definitely an aspect that needs to be made aware of because if it's not then it's just so easy to fall into coldness. It really, really, really is. But these people are not quitters. <laughs> when they've invested themselves into something, they do not quit easy. They do not give up easy. If they cut you off, it's for a fucking reason and they're not gonna come back. Like when you've crossed a line with the Venus square Saturn, they will not come back. They will not go backwards <laughs> at all. They already have enough trouble going forwards as it is. They're always running into obstacles. So why would they even go backwards if it's just going to, again, and provide more obstacles do the same thing over again no they do not have time for that they do not care for that saturn is like i said saturn is all about setting goals and moving forward these are the last people to be like crawling on their knees asking for that person back no they're so scared of rejection why would they do that why would they put themselves in that position so if they are running after you that's a really, really big deal. And they really, really, really like you and care for you. And you should take that really seriously. And you should take that as a huge compliment. Being with the Venus square Saturn can be super rewarding at times because they do not give their love to just anybody. So you know you are very special and exclusive in getting it. But also sometimes it can be really, really icy. This person's a cat. You know, just think about how cats are, <laughs> right? Like, if a cat's snuggly with you, like, holy shit, you're the most special person in the world. But, you know, most of the time, you're, you'll are you call their name and they'll just stare at you and be like, I'll come if I want to, but no, I'm gonna do my own thing. Their pen independence can be very attractive. They can do their own thing and spend their own time in their own ways and entertain themselves. But, you know, secretly, we all want our squares to be trines and we all want to spend time with the person we love and build something with the person we love and make lasting commitments with the person that we love um, and all that stuff. So that want is there um, really, really, really severely. That want is there to build something with somebody else. Um, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time to build that with somebody and it's also going to take some time for the Venus square Saturn to find that person that they want to build with. To end this video off, a word of advice is self-love is vital but you also have to open your heart up enough to be able to learn how to coexist. If you have any future re video requests about what aspect you'd want me to talk about, leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching. All my silly, goofy links are down below and have a good rest of your day, losers. Bye.